Welcome back bow hunters. This is Ron with Stay Sharp. In this video we're going to be looking at the Palmer Extreme Cut 160 grain broadhead. This is a huge head and if it looks familiar to you that's because it is a I guess you could call it a next generation or larger version of the discontinued Muzzy Phantom. So here's the Muzzy Phantom, which was in itself a big head. And when Muzzy took it over, they ran it for a few years, kept the name the Phantom. After Stan Lorowski's wife sold them the company, and then they discontinued it. But Palmer wanted the head continued, but in a far larger platform. It's starting there an inch and a half wide. It's one of the biggest four blade heads on the market and 160 grains. So as you can see, compared to the Muzzy Phantom, it's considerably larger. And for guys who shoot smaller heads like Tooth of the Arrow and Slick Trick, I'm gonna put in some pictures here of how it compares to those heads. Like we do in every instance, we are going to try to figure out how to sharpen this head. Now, like the Muzzy Phantom, the bleeder blades do come out and will be sharpened separately. So we'll need one guide for this blade and another guide for the bleeder. I've had some success with this head because I had killed so many deer with the Muzzy Phantoms. I was sad to see them go, but as soon as I learned about these, I picked up four three packs and then I went on to kill a couple of antlerless deer. And the holes that these things blow are amazing. And these were winter hunts and I was blowing through deer into the frozen Wisconsin earth. And these heads survived very well. So I, I have some experience with these heads. But we're going to use the same protocol we use with every head. We're going to check out-of-the-box sharpness. These are all new heads. Uh, we're going to look at them under the microscope, and then we're going to come up with a sharpening regimen for them. So let's start by looking at the factory edge under the microscope. So their edge looks good. I can tell just from feeling it that it's got some sharpness to it. But let's see what the scale says we get for a reading. Two hundred and fifty one. So that is within my uh, hunt readiness chart. Um, so this, these heads are hunt ready. Now let's take a look at the bleeder next. And these can be shot as a two blade or they can be shot as the four blade for the full 160 grains. Let's look at the bleeder next. One ninety four. So the bleeder is very sharp as well. And as I said, I've taken some deer with these. I did not even bother sharpening them out of the package because I knew they were hunt ready. And they were. They worked absolutely beautiful on the deer that I took. But once you shoot a deer, once you practice with them, you own the sharpening. This head is not replaceable from the ferrule, so you own the sharpening of it. So next we're going to look at what it takes to get these heads sharp. After looking the head over, it makes sense that the best choice is the fixed blade guide with 14 inches of tape on each roller because it is a double bevel. 
you want to color up the edge with a dark colored marker to check your wear. Do not push down hard. That is the quickest way to wreck diamond plates. The other reason you don't want to push down hard is there is a lot of unsupported blade here. So if I push down hard, you can see it's flexing. Try to get a little bit better angle. So pushing down hard creates a lot of flex and rounds off your edge. You don't need to push down hard. It wrecks the diamond plates, wrecks the sandpaper, whatever you're using to sharpen on. And it flexes the blade, so a ton of reasons not to push down hard. The weight of your hand is enough. Now I'm using an 800 grit uh, plate. These um, heads are new, so I don't have to start with 240 and 400. So I'm simply starting with 800 grit. So I'm getting rid of the marker. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to sharpen one side until I get a burr. And when I get a burr, I will come back and we will talk about that next. That is a lot of blade to sharpen. That is a big blade. But it's come to the time where we want to test for the burr. We've sharpened this edge which raises a burr on this edge so let's see if we can get a narrow piece of post-it note to catch on it so that popping that flexing that you see and here along the entire edge is the post-it note catching on a burr once we have achieved a burr at 800 grit on this side, there's no point in sharpening any further. We've folded over some excess metal and we've reached the other side of the blade. At this point, we will flip it over and you'll, you'll hear it, it'll be a little crunchy at first. And then it gets smoother sounding as we've broken the burr off. Now I'm going to sharpen it again. Always rotate your plates, get more life out of them. Alrighty, time to check for the second burr at 800 grit. That paper flexing and hanging up on the burr says that we have achieved it. Now, we know we have had a burr on both sides. Let's go break this new burr off. Break it off again. And again, now, if you don't have a burr, now that we've got it all gone, the paper slides right off the bevel. There is nothing for it to hang up on. So if you have not achieved a burr, you have not reached the other side of the blade. So right now we've got an 800 grit edge on there, uh, which is reasonably sharp. But we can go further and do better. Before we switch to 1200, we want to clean off all of the 800 grit debris. We do not want to contaminate the 1200 grit plate with anything from 800 grit. So now we will take our 800 grit, or I'm sorry, our 1200 grit plate, and we will repeat the process and get a burr on this side. When we've achieved it, flip it over, break that off, and get a burr on the second side. I will do that and I will be back. Okay. 
All right, we're on our second burr of 1200 grit. Now it's time to check to see that we've achieved that burr. Again, when the paper catches and flexes and pops, we know we've reached a burr along the entire edge. And it has to be along the entire edge. Don't just get a burr here and nothing here, then this won't be sharp and this will. So now we've achieved two burrs at 12. We'll go and chase those away. And you'll see that there is no burr. There is nothing for the paper to catch on. So now we will again clean off the head, the rollers. We want to make sure we're not going to transfer any of the 1200 debris to 2500. And that's where we're going to go next is 2500 grit. I will get a burr on this side, break it off, get a burr on the second side, and I will be back. Alrighty, it's time to check our burr status. Blow off that debris and see if we have reached the burr. Yes, we've achieved the burr. The paper flexes over the entire length. That is the key. Now, at 2500 grit, we're going to break that burr off or push it over the other side. Push it over the other side on this side. Do that again. And the paper clip method here, you know, you can only bend the paper clip so many times before it breaks. The same is true with this burr. You can only bend it back and forth until it snaps off. And when it does, it leaves a 2500 grit equivalent of a jagged edge, but 2500 grit is pretty smooth. So where that burr was broken off is going to be a very fine edge. But this alternating method is cheap insurance to make sure we have no burr left before we go on to the next step, which is going to be stropping with buffing compound. And before we do that, we want to clean off any 2500 grit debris from the guide and the broadhead. And we don't want to transfer that to the buffing compound surface. So buffing compound is what we're going to talk about next. Now that we've achieved all the burrs and sharpening, with the grits that we used all the way up to 2500 we are now going to use buffing compound and strop strop can happen on mashed potato boxes it can happen on instant rice boxes cereal boxes you don't need a leather strop just use a piece of cereal box cardboard or something like that and apply the buffing compound to it the strop is only a vehicle for this buffing compound which has a uh, suspended ab abrasive that is in this wax. The key to stropping is only using a backwards pulling motion then lifting. Now the burr that you're going to produce with the stropping is not going to be detectable you won't feel it with even a piece of paper. So, strop on one side for a bit, 
flip it over, try to keep essentially an even count, strop the other side. So there's no burr that you're going to feel for here. It's literally strop until you feel you're uh, good enough. And you cannot overdo this. You could do this all you want and you will not take off too much material. Yes, it's turning black. That's the metal coming off the blades. But you are not removing that much metal. It just shows on the uh, white background. So strop in alternating fashion like I'm doing here. Now we have not stropped very long. I will wipe off the excess that was on here. But let's try something here to see what sort of an edge we're producing. You can see that is a mirror finish on that edge. In just the little time that we did it, we have produced a mirror image. And I tell you what, that goes such a long way as far as improving the hone. Now some people don't like a buffing compound edge. Some people like it to be a little toothier. They'll stop at 2500. Some people will stop at 1200. You own the edge that you will tolerate and the edge that you are willing to work for. I personally won't hunt with an edge that hasn't been stropped. I've seen the effects. The bloodletting is amazing once you've stropped that edge. Instead of pushing the bleedy things out of the way, it cuts through them. Especially effective on lung material, so I strop all the time. So I'm going to keep doing this for a while, and then the next step is going to be looking at it under the microscope, and then in the sharpness tester. The edge under the microscope was a good, clean, burr-free edge. Looked very good, but the proof is in the tester. Ninety-seven. That is a good score. That is a very sharp edge. Sharper than a razor blade. I've uh, tested a few razor blades. I'll show you how a razor blade scored. So 97 is a very good score and the work that we put into it was clearly worth it. So now let's look at the bleeder blades next. Despite using the microscope and the sharpness meter, I still get people wanting to see me cut rubber bands or other tests shaving. So let's see if I can do a no effort shave here. So the sharpness meter and the microscope don't lie when it's shaving sharp and as sharp as a razor blade. That's exactly what those two devices are telling me and this head is incredibly sharp right now. With our main blade process done we'll move on to the bleeders now. So the bleeders are positioned in the gray guide. That is the best option for this head. And you can see the placement just barely exposing the vent in the bleeder would get you the closest to the factory angle. But again, the test is the marker test to see that we have 
even wear that the blade is truly parallel to the roller. A few light strokes. I can bring this side up a little bit. Yep, I can bring, I'll bring this side up just a little bit. I'm going to loosen it. Bring this side up just a bit. There. Tighten. That's why we do the Sharpie marker test. Good wear all the way around. Winner, winner. All right, so you saw the process for the main blade. Burr on one side, flip it over, break it off, burr on the other side. I won't make this video any longer than it needs to be. I'm going to go through all of the uh, grits. I'll do the buffing compound the exact same method, lift and pull on buffing compound. And then we'll come back to the microscope and the sharpness meter after that. And now we'll see what the meter says for a score. One hundred is our score. So that is an improvement over what we had. So the two guides required to do the Palmer Extreme 160 would be the fixed blade guide for the main blades. 14 inches of tape on the rollers to match the factory bevel. Now you don't have to match the factory bevel. I did, so the amount of blade grind here is the same as it is here. That's the factory inch. If you did it without the tape, you would have a little bit more exposed blade grind. Um, nothing wrong with that. You get to choose the edge that you want. So you can run this without tape if you'd like, or 14 inches of tape to match the factory bevel. Here the gray guide with that much exposure and you can see just a little bit of the vent coming out is the same as the factory bevel and we produce some pretty good scores with it and like i said i have killed a few deer with these heads they are impressive as heck get them sharp and they will be incredibly lethal so thanks for watching